Hello, today I'm going to introduce you to the logistic map. This is a way of modelling population growth and it's a very, very simple model, but it does give rise to chaotic behaviour. And as well as introducing you to this map, I would also like to show you how to, you could program it and investigate it, which will be the main focus of the video. But first, a quick introduction to what the logistic map does. As I said, it models population growth in a way that will be really intuitive to anyone who's ever played the classic PC game Zoo Tycoon. Now, if you've never played this game before, I recommend it, but you're in charge of a zoo and you're running your zoo, minding your own business, when suddenly someone comes up and says, you know what your zoo really needs? Llamas. Poorly drawn llamas. And so you go ahead and you buy a couple of llamas and it becomes quite obvious quite quickly that you're not going to get more llamas with just a handful. You need to buy in more llamas and they'll start to reproduce and you'll get more and more llamas. But this won't continue forever. At some stage, someone's going to come along and say, buddy, you've kind of overdone it with the llamas. There are too many of them and they're competing for resources and it's overcrowded. They're just not happy. And that's what the logistic map is trying to model. And I promise I won't use llamas anymore. I use something sensible like bacteria. So how do we encapsulate that quite complicated system in a simple model? Well, here it is. This is the map. And map in a mathematical sense means we take one number and translate it over to another. In this case, we're taking the number of llamas, say, at a particular time, which will denote xn minus 1, and we're going to work out what the population of llamas will be on the next step, xn. So that's what these x's are. x is the population of llamas, and the n tells us which step it is. And this is an iterative process. We're not thinking continuously. We're thinking one step at a time. What's the number of llamas in my next step? Now, there are three terms there, and I'll explain how those link to the ideas we've developed already. So, firstly, if the number of llamas you have is too small, then, well, your population won't grow as quickly. So that means that we want the number in the next step to be proportional to the number in the previous step. But then we have the problem of overcrowding. How do we handle that? Well, the next term, 1 minus the population, what that's going to do is, once you get the overcrowding, that's going to become a very small term up to the point where it becomes zero. And so that will limit the llama population. And our final term is R. Now, this is to do with how fast the population can grow. Because it varies from organism to organism, of course, some can reproduce very quickly. Others, like pandas, for example, it's much more difficult. And so we can adjust R in order to see what the model predicts for different species. Now, even taking this away from the biology, there's some very interesting maths here, which I'm inviting you now to explore. And to start off, here are a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, for which values of xn minus 1 will our new value, xn, be equal to 0? And then a slightly more involved question, you'll find that there are some values of xn minus 1 where the next value in our sequence, xn, will be equal to that. There will be no change from one iteration to the next. And which values of xn minus 1 will cause that? Now, have a go at those two questions, pause the video, and we'll see some of the answers when we look at modelling this. All right, now we've seen the logistic map and we want to start investigating it. Of course, we could program this, we could get our C++ out, do something like that. But I'm going to show you how to do it on the spreadsheet because just about every device has a spreadsheet program on it, so this is much more accessible. And also I've done this with pupils going down to year five, which is about 10 years old. So this is something everyone can try. And I'm going to start off by making two columns. One is going to be for the number of the iteration, 
n and the other one is going to be for my population at that step n. And I'm going to also put in my two constants r, remember that constant in the formula, and let's do a starting point x0. I'm putting these to the side, in fact I'm going to highlight these cells as well, uh, actually I'll do that a bit later. So when I get this all started up, I know those are the two which I change. Let's start with a value of r equals 1 for simplicity, and let's start with a very small value for the population, uh, 0 0.0001, yeah, a small population. Um, oh, I should say the value of r should change, uh, should vary from 0 to 4 in order to keep this x variable in the range 0 to 1. So let's let's start let's start doing it then. We'll start by making the first step we have n equals zero, and I'm going to just copy across the value for my starting position into the population column B here. So I'll just say equals to get a formula, and then it's cell D4 done. And we've got our zeroth iteration. Now the first one. There are loads of ways to iterate. I'm just going to do a probably a bit of a heavy-handed one, but I'm going to write equals to get a formula, the previous value, a2, plus 1. Yeah, there are simpler ways to do that, but if you're not used to using formulae, that's a nice way to start out so you can see how you get a formula. So uh, now we're going to use our logistic map formula. Here we go, equal sign to get the formula, and then what do we need? Well, we need our R value, which is currently in cell D2. So we've got D2. We're just going to multiply that by our X value, which is in the cell above, B2. And the last thing we multiply by one minus the population value. So one minus B2. Okay, and that gives us the next step. Now, there's a problem with this though, because I'm going to advance the cells on, but as I do that, what's happened, it's gone wrong, you probably know why, because this reference to cell D2 has moved down and it's now referencing cell D3 in our formula, so that's no good. What I'm going to do to fix that is just put a dollar sign in front of the 2, that will hold that value in cell 2, and so we will, as I advance this down, we'll be using the correct value for R from then on. And that's it. And that's all the that's all the work done. All we're going for us. We're now going to get the spreadsheet to do the rest. So let's uh, take this down. I'm going to scroll down, 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 down. And I'm just, uh, if you didn't see what I did there, I just grabbed that corner, that, that black square in the corner, and I'm auto-filling the cells below. You can copy and paste. All sorts of ways to do this. And there we go. I've got to the 50th value. Uh, now, this is not good. This is not looking so good for our population of bacteria or whatever they were. Uh, you can see it's gone down to 9.95 .9 times 10 to the minus 5, so the population has collapsed. Now, if you, if you did the second exercise to work out what's the stable point for this population, that shouldn't come as a surprise. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a larger number, let's say 1.5, I'm going to put 1.5 as my value for R. Can you predict what the stable value of population will be for 1.5? I'll give you a second to think about it. If you did the second question, you'll already have the answer, or you can put that number in. I'm hitting enter now. And the answer is well, 0 0.333, so a third. So if you predicted that, well done. That's good. Now, what we really want to do is plot this. So what we can see is initially there's quite a slow growth in the population, but that accelerates and the population is doing pretty well for itself. But at some point it starts getting too crowded and the population growth isn't as much and it starts to level off. We get this nice S-shaped curve. There we go. The graph's coming up now. Right, so let me, let me put that there. And I'm going to change this R value now. There we go, so we can see everything. I'm going to change the R value. Let's increment a little bit. Let's go up to 
and we can see it gets to a higher value. If we go all the way up to two, then our population rather rapidly expands and then uh, slows down and goes to a half, as we expect. You'll also notice that if the if the population sorry if the R value is one or below, then the population goes into a decline. Let me show you zero point five. Is that and these are all things you can play with. Build this spreadsheet yourself and try out some different values. The really interesting thing happens, not that this isn't interesting, but something else that's interesting happens when R gets to about three. So let's type in three for our R value. What you can see here is that we don't really have one stable value anymore. We're now, the population's now oscillating between two values. And this just gets more and more pronounced. Let me go up to 3.5 and we see, well, actually I've gone too far. There we go. Around 3.4, we can see that the population's now rattling around between 0.85-ish and 0.45. Really interesting. And as we go higher and higher and increase the R value to 4, we'll see more and more strange behaviour. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I want you to find that out for yourself. But it just goes to show that this very simple map gives us very interesting results when we let it run. I'm going to tidy up my graphs a bit so I can show you a few highlights. But that's it from the spreadsheet section of this video. Now I've tidied the graphs up, we can describe in a bit more detail what's happening. So I'll start off with r equals 1.5 and we can see that this stabilizes at around a third, in fact, exactly a third. And that's where the nth value of x will always be equal to the previous value. It will just stay in the same place. If we change r to 3.7, which is another value I showed you, what's happening here is that you get two stable-ish values, which x is oscillating between. And the reason it's doing that is because that when r equals 3.7, we have a situation where the nth value of x will not be equal to the previous value of x, but the one previous to that, the x n minus 2 value. And as r increases, we start to see that x goes back to an earlier point in the pattern. So at r equals 3.75, for example, we now have four points that the population x is oscillating between, and so the nth value of x will be equal to the n minus fourth value of x. And just to show you that this is acting quite randomly and quite chaotically, I made two more graphs, one where I put the value, the initial value of x at 1% bigger, and another where I put it at 2% bigger. And initially, we don't see much of a difference. All three lines are in the same place. But once we get to around about the 20, maybe the 23rd iteration, we start to see that differences are creeping in. And the further we go after that, the more obvious these differences become until we're describing very different populations. And I'm going to finish there. I'm going to let you find out more. But the last thing I'd like to do is just give you one more exercise. Can you plot the stable values of x for each value of r. And if you do that, you will reproduce a really interesting and amazing looking graph. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has piqued your interest.